All right, guys, today we are going to be discussing about the new for 2020 coaster, Candemonium at Hershey Park. This coaster is actually going to be opening in July, so this is the early predictions and basically a pre-review of the coaster. So I will feature a special guest who actually lives near Hershey Park, so he will give you his thoughts on the coaster, and he will talk about some of the topics I'm going to be talking about, such as intensity, theming, and he will actually compare it to Skyrush, the other hyper coaster in the park. Now, I will be analyzing the POV, telling you the elements, and guessing what they will exert, because I have written some B&M hypers, so I will give you my thoughts on what this coaster may feel like, like such as the forces. Without further ado, do, let me introduce you to my special guest, Hershey Addict. What is going on guys, it's JD from the Hershey Addict, and before I get into my little ramble on Candemonium, if you like Hershey Park and all other things roller coasters, I would strongly advise you to check it out on my channel, the Hershey Addict. You will absolutely love it. I have tons of fun projects on the way that I think you will enjoy. But with that out of the way, let's talk Candemonium. It's going to be one of the best coasters in all of Pennsylvania and all of the country, to be honest. So I have a few key talking points that I want to go into here. The first being intensity. And for some reason, I've heard a lot of enthusiasts say both sides of this argument. Some are saying that this coaster is going to be really intense, and others are saying it's not going to be that intense at all. And I'm not really sure why this debate is even a thing, to be honest. So we all know about Hershey's other hyper coaster in the park, Sky Rush. That coaster is as intense as it gets, in terms of hypers, in my opinion. I think it's the most intense hyper ever built, and I think it's one of the most intense coasters in the world. You pull some crazy Gs on that coaster, almost a guaranteed gray out every time. It's, it's intense as heck. So we're talking about Candemonium. Hershey Park does not want to build another intense hyper because, to be honest, when it comes to the GP, those things just aren't the greatest. BM hypers, however, are known for not being intense, but rather being smooth, graceful flights almost. And I think Candemonium is definitely going to fit with this theme. I definitely see this coaster being not intense at all, and it's just going to be a nice sailing, gliding-like experience. Sure, you're still going to be going 76 miles per hour, but it's not going to be as scary and intense 76 miles per hour. We're looking at this ride's layout. It has a lot of long, overdrone airtime hills, overbanks, which is just perfect for this kind of ride. It's going to haul. Don't get me wrong. But just because it hauls does not mean it's going to be super intense. And I think that's a good thing. I think it would be kind of stupid for Hershey Park to build another super intense coaster, hyper coaster, and this ride just is going to fit in perfectly. It's not going to be intense, but that's a good thing because a coaster like this, sure, I would have rather had it been a giga, but that's a different topic for a different day. This coaster is exactly what Hershey Park needs. And this kind of leads into my next point, airtime. This thing is going to be an airtime machine. The first half of this ride's layout is strongly built on airtime, and we're talking some good floater airtime. Like I said in the First segment, B&M Hypers are known for A, not being that intense and rather gliding and peaceful almost, but two, they're all known for floater airtime. I think Ken and William will follow this trend as well. This coaster is going to give amazing floater airtime, and it might even give some small signs of ejector in the back. When you have those B&M clamshell restraints, you, uh, you know you have good things coming with you in terms of airtime. And I've been seeing a lot of funny GP comments asking why this thing does not have over-the-shoulder restraints because they're scared they're going to fall out, which I find so stupid because Sky Rush is in the same exact park. I mean, come on, guys. You guys are better than this. But anyways, I'm getting off topic. Um, the airtime on this thing is going to be great. Um, I am not worried about that at all. But I really think the airtime is not going to be the highlight of the ride. It has one particular uh, overbank that I... I forget the exact name of the element, but it has one particular overbank, the first overbank, and it has a lot of small helixes and things like that, and I think those are actually going to be the highlights of the ride. Looking at this ride's layout, obviously it's kind of amazing airtime, but it has a lot of funky and quirky elements that I think are personally going to make the ride great. That does not mean it's not going to have awful airtime. It's kind of amazing floater airtime, and I'm super excited to uh, just absolutely fly out of my seat on this ride. And lastly, the theming. And this ride goes perfectly in uh, Hershey's Chocolate Town. 
this ride um, is in the section that is built around chocolate. You have the Hershey's Ice Cream Parlor. You have the big restaurant. You have the Kisses Fountain. And what is it headlined by? A coaster theme to chocolate. You have that brown chocolate colored track. You have the station that features all the Hershey products. You have Twizzlers, Kisses, Reese's, Hershey's, anything you can think of. You have the trains. You have a Kisses train that's blue and white, Reese's train, and a Twizzlers train. The theming is just, it kind of speaks for itself. I mean, on ride theming, it's not going to be nothing spectacular. The biggest um, thing of on ride theming that I can think of is A, the um, trains, like I was talking about, they're colored, the track is colored. And that Kisses Found. That Kisses Found is going to be such a cool, um, it's going to be an amazing photo spot, first of all. That thing is going to be photogenic as heck. And secondly, going around that thing, that's going to be so fun going around that Kisses Found. Just seeing that Kisses Found flash before your very eyes, I can already picture myself laughing and screaming as I go past that thing. That's going to be fun. And it's going to, it's going to be a really welcome fit. And when we're talking about Hershey Park, other than Coco Cruiser, this is the only ride themed to chocolate. And that is just absolutely crazy to me. I have no idea why it's taken Hershey this long, but um, I'm glad they finally did it. They've made a coaster theme to their brand, and this ride is only going to value their brand that much more. I know when people are going to hop off uh, Candemonium, it's probably going to lead right into a gift shop that's going to be filled with Hershey's chocolates. And people are going to want to buy and eat some chocolate after Ryan Candemonium. I'm going to be one of them. I'm definitely going to be smashing Twizzlers into my face after again around on that Twizzlers train. And that is a guaranteed fact. But we're talking about this ride as a whole. This ride is going to be spectacular. It's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be one of the greatest coasters at Hershey Park. One of the greatest coasters in the state of Pennsylvania. And yeah, that's all I really have to say about Candemonium. Like I said... If you enjoyed this little ramble, definitely check out my channel, The Hershey Act. But um, that's all I really had to say. I want to thank Airtime Productions for allowing me to be on the channel. It's an absolute pleasure. And uh, yeah, man, I'm going to throw it right back to you. And I hope you all enjoyed my little ramble. So yeah, thank you very much, Hershey Attic. Now I will talk about my viewpoint on this coaster. So it won't be as intense as Skyrush, obviously. And I wasn't really expecting it to be because... um. You know, Hershey already has an intense coaster, which they weren't planning on doing originally. So now they're going to have to add one that's more focused on floater, not really ejector. So it's great that they have two hypers, one focusing on intensity and one focusing on gracefulness. So I don't expect this coaster to be graceful. And like you said, there's two viewpoints. People are thinking... This may be intense and have some good ejector moments, but I think it's going to be the opposite. Like Hershey Attic said, why are we even arguing about this? We know what B&M Hypers will be like. So that's, I mean, Hershey Attic did a good job of explaining what the intensity is going to be like. So I'm going to tell you guys about the theming. And pretty much Hershey Attic nailed it. I don't know what else I'd have to say. They finally realized that they should actually in fact theme this coaster to chocolate i don't have really anything else to say because hershey addicts nailed this part and theming so without further to do i'm going to analyze the pov so you start off with that 200 plus foot lift hill and then you crest over it and you go down this first drop it, I don't think it's going to provide great ejector in the back, but it could surprise us. No idea. But then you head up into a huge camel back that looks like it's going to provide, provide some great floater. And then you go into this, looks like a hammerhead turnaround, kind of like something you find on Mako, Raging Bull, Nitro. You know, common uh, hyper coasters. So after that, what you're going to do is you're going to go back around and what's great is this takes up so much land this coaster because they're not landlocked anymore as they were for sky rush so that's why it was so intense so then after you complete that turnaround you go into yet again another camelback which this time looks like it might provide some ejector and a speed hill which will provide even more ejector and then you hit a fast turn 
which looks like it will provide insane lats, and then go into what looks like a wave turn, which we all know how that's going to be. And then you go into what looks like another speed hill, or it could be another floater hill. But anyways, I'd be satisfied if it just provided forces. So then you go into, yet again, another lat turn that looks like it's going to provide a ton of laterals. And this time it's going to go around the Hershey Fountain. And it looks like you're going to get a few pops of airtime before you go back into the brake run. Which is awesome. It looks like this will be filled with not only ejector, but floater. So it satisfies the enthusiast and the GP. Which is awesome. I mean, this coaster needs to appeal to the GP because most of the money from the park is from the GP. So, you know what? I, I feel like this will be a great coaster. It's a great investment for Hershey. They have done amazing on this coaster and... I don't think it will be that disappointing. Some enthusiasts may actually think it will be disappointing due to its lack of intensity, but I wouldn't mind it. It's still got the statistics. So, I'm going to compare it to Skyrush, even though we have touched on this briefly with Hershey Addict and throughout my POV analysis and intensity. So... It's not going to be an intense ride. Don't go in expecting it to be intense, and don't go in expecting it to be in your top 10. So, this coaster, compared to Skyrush, is just more graceful, like Hershey Attic said. And then Skyrush is going to be this blackout machine that has tight turns, straight up insane ejector hills. I don't know... Because I haven't been on Skyrush, but from what Hershey Attic said, I think Skyrush may be a little bit better. So, that's pretty much all I have to say. I'm keeping it brief. And special thanks to Hershey Attic. I will leave some of his links down in the description. You guys can check him out. Go follow him on Instagram. Go sub to him on YouTube. He just recently hit 600 subs. Next, get him to 1K, guys. He really deserves it. He is super entertaining, super funny, and his videos, you can just binge them for hours. So go check him out. And thank you guys for watching. Goodbye.